Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new, my name's Lauren and today we are doing my August TBR. So in the month of August, I read 31 books, which is insane, but I am going to preference that a majority of those books were via audio. So of the 31 books that I read, 27 of them were done, were read via, via audio. And then I had three books and one physical book. Even though I read so many books, I only gave out three five stars, but I did give out 19 four stars, but they just weren't five star reads. They were really good. They just weren't five stars. And I gave out three three stars, four two stars, and one one star. So interesting reading reading but I am going to go through these in the order in which I read them um I had some hits I had some misses so I'm gonna start from a start and then go down Twisted by Emily McIntyre got four stars fucking fantastic it is an Aladdin retelling very like more mafia heavy very similar to Wretched which is why I really really liked it I cannot wait for Crossed I think it's gonna be really good I'm just waiting to for it to whisper sing so I can listen to the audiobook because I just really like consuming those books in that way I think the narratives are fantastic. They are very good. Ellen McIntyre is a fantastic author and she really does a great job of making the characters complex. The, um, the even though the MMCs are you know, morally gray, they are so fascinating to read about and have so much depth to them, even though they're morally gray, which is I think something that falls short for a lot of re authors when they write morally gray characters, they just don't live up to scratch. I then read one of my biggest disappointments of the year. Daisy Hates by Jessica Hastings got a two star. What can I say? It was just kind of like dragging. I'm like, well, I want more to happen. It just didn't grip me the way that Magnolia Parks did. I just was putting off reading it so much. I just was like, I want something more. It just wasn't for me. Just simply wasn't for me, but it's fine. I'm not gonna cry about it, it is what it is, but it was still fun. Can you see where the rest of the story goes? I think that Daisy Hates and The Great Undoing will be a very good book though. My DNF for the month was The Game Plan by Macaulay Smiles. I love Macaulay Smiles so much. I love all of her books, but this one just fell flat. It felt very juvenile, felt like pick me energy, good girl, needs to be corrupted by a bad boy. And it's fake dating, which is one of my favorite tropes, but it just wasn't, wasn't what I was after. It didn't hit the way that I wanted it to, but what can I do? Had to DNF out. I didn't want to continue reading it. So I, put it as one star. I may go back to it in the future when I'm in the mood. It could have been a mood thing, but unfortunately. I then read Make You Mine by Laura Pavlov and gave it three stars. This had a really, really great potential. It's single dad, nanny trope, such an entertaining plot, more like really entertaining children. I loved the dynamics between all of the characters, but the drama was kind of unnecessary and a little bit chaotic. Felt very similar to Always Mine where it was just like, mm. Did we need to do this? I'm not sure, but it's fine. I didn't hate it. It was a good time. Definitely one I would recommend, just not my favorite. In comparison to the other books in the series, it just was not the best. I then listened to The Dare by Harley LaRue because I thought I was gonna listen to Losers, which I did not end up doing, but I listened to The Dare. It's a short, smutty novella. It is basically smart. There is no plot. Um, I gave it two stars. Yeah, it could not get more than two because it was just smart. Like there was nothing going on other than smart. I then listened via audio to King of Wrath by Anna Huang. This was a three stars. It is a reread. I wanted, I couldn't remember what happened and I wanted to listen to King of Pride and it just, it's okay. I enjoy them. They're good. They're not groundbreaking. The smart is good. The relationship dynamics are really good. I am very excited for the third one. I think the third one's gonna be one of my favorites, but this was, it was okay. I think if you're new to reading and like these very, you know, broody men, great recommendation, but I'm kind of fatigued. All her men feel very much the same. I then listened to King of Pride by Anna Huang. This got two stars though. It was a whole lot of nothing. I enjoyed the characters, but the book was a whole lot of nothing. Like nothing was happening. There were no, like there's no tropes. It's just kind of opposites attract, I guess, and like family drama. I don't know, it was lackluster. The Takeover by T.L. Swan, four stars. I wanted to give this five, but something happens towards the end that was like, how did this happen? Like, it was like very movie magic here and it was too unrealistic. I'm like, this is so much potential. It's so funny, so entertaining. I was cackling, laughing. I loved all the characters, but like the end was a bit strange. How did that happen? If you know what I'm talking about, tell me if you feel the same because I was just kind of like, mm. we're talking about children here. How did that happen? So yeah, it was very like a movie magic moment and 
that's the only reason I didn't give it a five stars because of that. It really took me out of the story and I sat there for like a good 10 minutes going, what the fuck? Literally. And then started a new series with a new author to me and that was Devious Little Liars by Elfo, but I gave it a four stars. This is a high school bully why choose series. And, mm, it was so good. I loved it. The plot was so intriguing. I just kept wanting to read more. It was great. I pretty much alternated between this book, like this series and another series, which I'll get to next, and went back and forth because I was really enjoying both. But it was great. I just, um, it wasn't a five star. I didn't like, you know, completely, completely love it. Some parts felt really unrealistic. For me, it felt like the way the Ravenhood trilogy should have felt. After that, I started the Lark Cove series. That is a series that I went back and forth with with the St. View High series. Tatted by, De by Debbie Perry, I gave four stars. I really enjoyed the relationship. Um, it is single mom, second chance, reunited with her baby daddy, and it was great. It was absolutely friggin' fantastic. I loved the child. I loved the feeling that the two characters go on both individually and together. Um, the way that the MMC, like, you know, stands up for his Baby Mama, it was, it was fantastic. I loved the ending. It was beautiful. I cannot wait for the next series though, connected to this. Timid by Debbie Perry, it's the same series. This is like, girl has a big, big crush on him. Secret sort of lover. It's kind of an interesting one. I don't really know how to explain it, but it is an age gap as well. She had a crush on him when she was a child and it was great. Timid by Debbie Perry got four stars. It was honestly so good. Um, could have been an easy five stars, but I just didn't feel like it needed to be five stars. It just didn't give her that five star feeling. I then read the final two books in the Save View High series, Dangerous Little Secrets and Twisted Little Truths. I loved the conclusion to this series. I loved all the men in this series. I There's often one man in a Y2 series that I'm kind of like, mm, you do nothing for me. I didn't have that in this. There was no let down character. They were all really good. The ending, the plot, the twist, the turn. I was like, oh my fucking God. Like I finished the second one. I'm like, oh, I have to go straight back into the next one because it was like, <laughs> I needed the conclusion. So good. Highly recommend. Al Thorpe is an Aussie author. So if you haven't read from Al Thorpe, Al Thorpe I really, really recommend. Dangerous Little Secrets and Twisted Little Truths got, both got four stars. And then listen to the next two books in the Lark Cove series. So Tragic got four stars and Tinsel got four stars. Both fantastic. Tragic is like a forced proximity, romance, second chance at love, crazy ex, really enjoyed it. Then Tinsel is, I guess like a fish out of water. She's a rich girl coming to work with, in her sister-in-law's bar. And she's got like no idea what she's doing. She's chaos. They are from totally different worlds, absolute opposites track. And it's a lot of back and forth. And I think it went on for a little bit too long, which is why it wasn't a five star. It could have easily been a five star, but Tinsel just needed a little bit to be a little bit shorter. I didn't like the back and forth as much, but I really, really enjoyed it. Easy four stars. I then listened to Antihero by Sarah Kate and I really friggin' enjoyed it. That was fun. I gave it a four stars. I enjoyed the plot. I was not expecting such an intense plot. I fucking loved it. He's supposed to be like the next priest. She is like an owner of a sex club. Insane. Loved it. The plot, I'm not going to say too much because the plot is like jaw on the floor. You weren't like, the twists were insane, but I loved it. I think I read it in I think I listened to it like in one day on one of the days that I was unpacking. I then listened to That Sick Love. Now I wanted it to be a five star, but That Sick Love by Jesse Hall was a four star. Still really, really good. I just wanted more like discussion of religious trauma. I felt like there wasn't enough. Um, it was a lot of smart, a lot of mystery plot. I just thought there was more like religious trauma and re religious pain discussion, which there just wasn't, unfortunately, but it is what it is. I then read the Casanova by T.L. Swan and this is another two star. Like everybody else, it was kind of strange. Elliot was a bit eh. The plot was chaotic. I was like, what the fuck is going on? Like it just kept changing every five minutes. I was like, can we get something straight here? Like, can we just have a linear plot? It just was up and down and here and there. I'm like, uh, where are we going with this story? Did I enjoy it? Definitely. Did, would I recommend it? No, I would say this is an easy skip. Easy skip, two star, not my favorite Tales one. I then listened to another Ice Planet Barbarian book and that was Barbarian Touch. This got a four star. 
I haven't really enjoyed it. She is hard of hearing, um, or is she, I don't know if she's hard of hearing or deaf, I can't remember, but she did have a ear implant, which she lost when she got taken to the Barbarian Island. He's obsessed with her, trying to protect her. Fantastic. So much fun, really enjoy it. Easy four star, such an easy read. I really enjoy these via audio. They are not literary masterpieces, but they are fun. To listen to Barbarian t Barbarian's Taming, which is the sister of the FMC and Bar Barbarian Touch. This is like an enemies to lovers. She falls in love with her sister's captor. Yeah, good fun. Really enjoyed it. That was a three star though. It just wasn't my favorite. The Ice Planet Barbarian series, like the book has to blow me away for it to get a five star because it is just basically a smutty novella. But they were a good time, definitely. If you want just like a smutty palette cleanser, they're perfect. I then had a day where I started and finished three audiobooks in one day. It was the day that I set up these shelves, which was kind of crazy, but what can I do? I listened to In a Row, Simply Mine and Only Mine. Simply Mine by Laura Pavel got a four stars. Only Mine by Laura Pavel got a five stars. Simply Mine is a forced proximity best friend's brother romance. Both like she is the maid of honor and he is the best man at her sister's at his sister's wedding and she had a massive crush on him as a teenager. Now he's like, I want her. Like, I want her, I need to have her, and I'm going to have her. So he's like chasing her. They end up becoming best friends, like friends with benefits for like a week, not telling anyone. Cute nicknames, he calls her Ladybug. There's so many funny side characters. There is like a funny nan that everyone loves. And he's an architect that's like coming in to renovate the school and it's so cute. Easy, easy, four stars. Um, I loved it. It was very cute. Only Mine is a enemy to lovers. These two characters are like, she's coming into his father's company. He's like, she's crazy, but he's real, has like massive, massive hots for her. And Dylan is the funniest character I've ever read about. That's why it gets a five star, because Dylan is fantastic. But it had like a turn at the end that I wasn't expecting. It ends up being a little bit of a military drama. And I wasn't expecting that, but it was a beautiful conclusion. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, it was had a lot more depth than I was expecting it to, and I really, really loved it. That day, the new Macaulay Smeltzer book got released, and that was Pretty Little Mistake, and I loved it. This is Accidental Pregnancy, Second Chance. They were like dating in high school. There's like secrets that are being kept between them, and like she's like, Why did he leave me? Doesn't know why he left her. Very, very good. Loved it. Four stars. I just think the family drama got a little bit too much for me at times, and I was like, mm. Why is this happening? That's why it's not a five star, but. Chef's kiss, fantastic. I think I am now a simp for the accidental pregnancy joke. I then read The Do Over by Taylor Swan and this got a four stars. I went into this very skeptical because I was really let down by the Casanova, but this was fun. I really enjoyed it. She's an Australian FMC. They meet on a, like during a backpacking trip where he's got a secret identity. The plot, like it was very long. This is my only, the thing that I learned with Taylor Swan as I went on. Some of the books get too long and there's just too much time spent on smut and not enough character development, which is why this gets a four stars. Really enjoyed the characters. I love the, the family dynamics. I loved the banter. It was very, very entertaining. I loved the resolution at the end and I think it was great. It was a really, really good book. I then finished the Lark Cove series and Time Lost by Daphne Perry got a four stars. Really, really enjoyed it. Loved the setup for the next book more than anything i loved the debanter and the push and pull between these two characters that are like he's obsessed with her she doesn't want to be with him she's like no 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 and it's just like back and forth the plot was very interesting as well but this is basically a setup for the next series and i cannot fucking wait i then listened to black ties and white lies by cat singleton and i love cat singleton this was a very very good book uh, easy four star read. It just didn't have that five star feeling. That's the only reason it's a let down. This is a fake dating sort of fake fiance situation ship. Fucking what? The smut? Fantastic. The plot? Fantastic. Really good book. Highly recommend. I love a good billionaire romance. It was hilarious. Like he buys a company so that he can have a conversation with her because he keeps, she keeps avoiding his phone calls. Loved it. I love the way he treats her. She's like headstrong ambitious and he just lets her have that and doesn't like talk down to her she has a lot of healing from her past relationships because she's got a lot of like trauma that she's holding from the relationship with her ex and mm, beautiful loved it fantastic i then read one of my five stars and that was the sinner by chantal tessier this is a best friends brother romance really really smutty this is a very very long book 
but I wasn't bored for a single set a second. This is like a 600 page book and I listened to the audiobook within like two to three days. I loved it. So good. The plot was like quite regular, not like constantly changing, but like like we get one resolution, then something else happened. Then it's like a next part of the plot that's getting, that's getting developed. And it was great. Freaking great. They're heavy on the smart, but they're very much like 50% smart, 50% plot. And it's done in such a beautiful, perfect way. The dark, mysterious underworld plot is amazing. I was like jaw on the floor at the, in the last like third of this book. Like it was just like blow after blow after blow. And I'm like, <sighs> foaming at the mouth. Fantastic, Chantal Tessia is an autobot author for me and I will read literally anything she puts out because they are so good. And then I read an arc by a dear friend of mine, Jerry Danae, she's an author friend, so read on Wildflowers, got a four, uh, four stars. I really enjoyed, this is a why I choose college romance basketball. She is like a murder mystery. She's been accused of murdering someone and like you're trying to figure out what happened, why it happened, what the plot is. The, past storyline is told through podcast format you don't know who the host is in the podcast it was fantastic it's very it's not a very long book it's like just over 300 pages very good enjoyed the smut i enjoyed all of the characters involved as well all the men were great i was not bored by a single man and i loved it there's always one that kind of is like not wanting to give in but the other two were like obsessed with her Loved it. Loved all the like the little nicknames they have for each other. Highly recommend it. If you've never read from Dre Danae, please pick up Rain on Wildflowers. If you want a high school wide choose, she also has that series. Mr. Master by Tail Swan got a four stars. It suffered that thing that the do I do over there where there was just a chunk of time where it was just smart and not much was happening and I wanted more. It was very good. This is a single dad nanny trope. Um, his wife died and he's like got this trauma that he's holding from his wife. The kids like got just this, this, these issues that they're dealing with, but she really is so, so supportive of the children. Um, she's an Aussie that's come for an, uh, to be an au pair. Again, it's an age, age gap, but it was great. Um, I just loved the way she just was so protective of the kids, looked after the kids so much, but yeah, there was just, it just fell short because there's that beat where it's like, there is not much happening, let's move it along. Like, let's go. Um, the MMC's parents are great. They're so funny, so entertaining throughout this book. So I enjoyed it. Um, I think I was just fatigued by this point because it was just, they're such long books and it just, there's just needs to be a little bit of refining for me personally. I then read from another author friend of mine and this was Before You by Dale Sky. This got four stars. I love this. This is fake dating, surf romance. He, she's got trauma. He's got trauma. There is spice. There is plot. I love the relationship dynamic between these two characters. They were so much fun to read about. This is a surf romance, college surf romance set in Australia, set up near Byron Bay. Please check it out. Like there is so much depth to these characters. It's always really great mental health rep and they are so good. Please, please read this. The first book is Wild Hearts and I, I love them. I love Jenna so much. These books are great. I cannot rave about them enough. I then finished the month out with a five-star read and that was Fake Empire by C.W. Finesworth. I had never read from C.W. Finesworth before. This is an arranged marriage billionaire romance. She's like determined, headstrong, like is focused on a career. The couple are just I'm obsessed. I don't want to say too much because it'll give it away what happens, but it is so good. Again, it's not a very long book, shorter than 400 pages, really easy listen. I love Fake Empire, an easy five star read. I just didn't want to stop listening, so I had to give it a five stars. Those are the 31 books that I read in August. Tell me what you guys read in the month of August down below in the comments. Please like and subscribe. As always, there is so much fun content coming your way, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye, guys.